All right, joining me now is Ty Windish, who covers the Milwaukee Bucks for the Eurostep Podcast and the Eurostep Podcast Network. Ty, thank you so much for hopping on, man. I'm talking to the most excited person in the NBA this year. <laughs> yeah, you, you really are. Um, it's it's quite a time. Certainly, you know, had hoped the but I thought the Bucks would would be interested in getting Dame. That's that's why. If anyone anyone's wondering uh, for the NBA what? reasons, yeah, no. yeah if, in case you hadn't heard, <laughs> um, I figured they would try. I didn't think they'd actually do it, and it's certainly quite the cost. That you know, some a player like Drew Holiday is never easy to trade, and everyone around the Bucks has said that, but. All that being said, again, uh, my goodness, what a pairing. So very, very excited to talk to you some more about uh, Dame and Giannis and the rest of the Bucks today. And, you know, really, I'll talk at any time about Dame playing with Giannis. I mean, <laughs> who wouldn't be excited to talk about that? It is very exciting, man. And and so let, let's dive right into it then. I, I, I want to get your perspective just for, first and foremost. I was going to ask kind of about the most interesting thing, but I, I know that that's Giannis and Dame. So yeah. let's let's frame it this way. The most interesting thing for this team is, I think, the difference before and after the Dame trade and kind of how emotionally and how, like, structurally and how I think a lot of people feel about the Bucks and their chances this year. Do you think that that's just a, a drastic difference uh, since before and after the Dame trade? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I think defense is a thing most people are, are glomming onto, and certainly that's going to be a, an adjustment for the Bucks. They're going to have to defend a little differently. I think. We expected them to, to a certain degree anyway, just with a new coaching staff coming in anyway. Um, but I think it, there may almost be a, too much attention paid to that right now. And I think not quite enough to what this team will be able to do offensively. I mean, in the days after the trade, even until, until now, there's these questions of, oh, is it gonna, it is going to be an adjustment process? How's the fit going to be? Is Chris Middleton going to fit? I, I think it's a little overthought i mean i think dame and Giannis is such a perfectly made pairing and they've both said you know they're studying film they want to make sure they fully understand each other you know they're they're really not going out there and saying like oh this is going to be easy this is going to be you know you know these guys right oh we have to work it's all yeah. about the work it's so boring you guys i would be having a lot more fun <laughs> if i was dame or Giannis in these press conferences but that's why i'm sitting here uh at a desk in a in a bedroom so um but I, I think Chris is going to be really set up to have a great year off of those two. Um, I think Brooke, with how he's stretchy, is going to is going to be a perfect center for these lineups. So you know, I think defensively they're going to have work to do, and I think I understand why people are questioning with kind of the perimeter defenders they have and Dame and Chris and whoever the fifth starter is, what their defense will look like when you lose a Drew Holiday. It's certainly a huge hit. I, I think just focusing on that is missing the forest for the trees when. You have the ability to pair Dame and Giannis, given the offensive issues the Bucs have had in the playoffs. Uh, I think there's just no question it's such a huge net positive, even if defensively you are a little bit worse. It does kind of remind me of when LeBron James and Anthony Davis were paired with the Los Angeles Lakers initially. Uh, where that first season, there were a lot of questions as to the depth. Who's the first, the third best player on the team? Uh, what does the rest of the roster look like? Are they going to be able to space the floor, play defense, et cetera? And then that team just killed the entire time. So I, I think that this team is going to kill. I think this team is going to be really, really, really freaking good. And I, you have to boil it down to the Giannis and Dame pairing first and foremost. Uh, I'm partial as a Nuggets guy to Jokic and Murray, given that they just won the title. But I can understand anybody that says that they believe that Giannis and Dame is going to be the best duo in the NBA this year. Just what, what do you think about the intricacies of that duo? Uh, what, what do you think makes them so great? I mean, I think just I think it's going to be the most unique pairing that we've seen in quite some time. I don't mean to be, you know, sound like a prisoner of the moment, but I think you could make the case one of the most interesting pairings ever because of the respective gravity they both bring. Because, like, we just haven't been in the three-point shooting era long enough. And I'm not making player comps here, to be clear, get ahead of that. But you look at some of the legendary duos in the league, like, you know, a Shaq and Kobe, right? Like, you know, they, Kobe was obviously a pull-up threat, but the gravity didn't extend out like Dames. Just the game wasn't played that way in the early 2000s. And of course, Giannis in this era of, you know, teams wanting to stretch out, his gravity around the basket right now is is certainly up there with the biggest players ever, especially given the era and not having so many low post bruisers around to defend him. And I just think it's going to be such a fascinating mesh of, 
what do defenses do? You know, Dame has wondered this. What do you do? Like, do you switch? Dame's really good against switches. Uh, Lewis Zat Zatzman wrote a great article for Bucks.com about how Dame is tremendous against switches. And it, those are two players that, like, good luck finding two guys who can guard both well enough to switch them because they're right. so different. Yeah, um, absolutely. You, you go under, Dame is shooting. You go over, I mean, Giannis in an advantage rolling to the rim. Giannis is a problem when he's at a disadvantage, you know, going toward the rim. So I just think anything that they do is going to be fascinating. But, of course, the, the biggest focus is, like, the pick and roll. What's the pick and roll look like? How do teams guard the pick and roll? I think they're going to do more horns. Um, I've seen some great clips of Dame in Portland running that set a bunch. He's already said he joked with Terry Stotts about, you know, bringing back multiple sets that he's used to and incorporating them into the offense. There's going to be Bucks fans listening who go, our offense is going to have sets. That sounds great. That's <laughs> just sets in general would be good <laughs> after some of these playoff losses. Um, so, yeah, I think the the interesting thing is just like for this duo, you know, what, what can teams even do to stop the gravity on both ends? Because if you give either guy any bit, any sliver, it, they're, they're just so dangerous and it's so immediate how much, how quickly they'll make a defense pay. So I just feel like there's going to be so much tremendous pressure with something as simple as a, as a pick and roll, you know, I mean, I, of course, as you mentioned, Jokic and, and Murray, I think that is the same level, even if, you know, Murray is not looked at as a dame, Jokic just giving the all around spacing threat and them being so prolific and comfortable with each other. It's a similar idea. And we've seen teams have similar issues doing anything with it. it it's really hard to handle those combinations. So um, I, I think just getting to watch these guys go into this over and over and make defenses much more stressed than the Bucks typically do just because they were so predictable. It seemed like at times in the last few years, even with a dominating force like Giannis, it, defense has got comfortable. I just don't think that comfort's going to be there uh, with this Bucks team. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And uh, to, to kind of add to that Jokic and Murray versus Giannis and Dame distinction, on the offensive end, I, I think I see Jokic and Murray as – two different three level scores where they are like each kind of intertwined with where they can operate on the floor. And that, that versatility makes them so dangerous. The thing with the box is that like you have the best versions of each of those ideals where you've got the best rim gravity and the best three point gravity, or at least very close to it on each of those sides. So it's going to be an absolute monstrous duo and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to see how teams guard it because there is going to be a lot of overloading in the paint. So there's going to be a lot of overloading at the three-point line for those guys, probably sending three to guard two, which means that somebody else is open. So can you tell me about Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, and maybe Pat Connaughton? Like, are those guys, do you think, ready for the task at hand when it comes to making those extra shots? Yeah, I, I really do. You know, I think Chris especially is probably, I, I've said he's going to be one of the biggest beneficiaries here because he's, had so many tremendous runs. I mean, obviously they win a championship with him as often the primary ball handler in crunch time. But, you know, anyone familiar with Chris's game knows it, it, he always would have been better suited being a little bit lower in the offensive pecking order. You know, he doesn't have the most refined handle. He's not an amazing finisher. He finishes strong, but, you know, he doesn't have a, a great handle. He doesn't have a great finishing package. So letting right. him operate against disadvantaged defenses where he's either getting open shots, which Chris is an elite shooter. I think that that's always been consistent. And if he's operating versus a closeout versus against an engaged defense, that just gives him such a, a leg up. So I think he's going to be set up to really feast in these lineups. I think Brooke Lopez, the three-point shooting, you know, he works with that Noah system. It's, it's improved over the last couple of years after being a little flaky, but just the gravity he provides and and obviously, again, maybe we'll see more of Brooke around the paint, too. There might be more room for him in the dunker spot if that Giannis Dame pick and roll is moved up the floor. I mean, this is a player who became the Nets all-time leading scorer all around the basket. So uh, right. wherever he's at on the floor, he's a threat. I think Pat certainly trusts he had a down year three-point shooting last season, but uh, was good again in the playoffs. And he's now working with that Noah system, too. So Bucks fans are very excited about that after seeing Brooke shoot a lot better this past year. What's going to be really interesting is like, can a player like Marjan Bochamp get on the floor more? I mean, certainly they could use an athletic wing defender. Apparently in camp, he looks great. So do the other 450 NBA players, but still <laughs> apparently he looks great in camp. Um, and I think he's going to have a shot to, you know, if not start, certainly play a huge role because they just need that, that archetype 
Um, and I think you can afford a little less offense now with, of course, Dame coming in for Drew. So uh, I, I think someone like Pat would be more likely to close because that's just someone you trust. I mean, when you've got Mike Breen bangs in the finals, you, there's just a different level of comfort there Ooh. as as an auxiliary oh, yeah. player on the floor. I mean, that's a special feeling for for any team fan to see their role player get those. I mean, that that matters. Um, but yeah, I think that that crew is set up to do enough. I think they were, you know, they managed to do enough to two now two plus years ago when the Bucks won, and I think they're all going to be asked to do a bit less. So even if they are a little worse off than then, I think that's okay. And I think for Chris, you know, he's still not fully practicing. Sounds like he's hoping to be ready by game one this year, taking it slow on the ramp up, but not dealing with issues, which I think is critical for him. He says he feels great. They're just taking it easy with him. He looked really good in the playoffs, even before that surgery, 26 and six on good shooting numbers. So I'm pretty confident he'll be ready and he'll be able to do what the Bucks need him to do, which again, less than ever before, which I think is crucial. Obviously, you, you mentioned perimeter defense a little bit at the beginning here when you trade a guy like Drew. And uh, one other thing, you you lose a guy like Javon Carter, who I'm, yeah. I'm now thinking about the rotation and thinking about, man, it would have been nice to hold on to that guy if if, if you knew that a, a Drew Holiday trade was was potentially in the works. But um, is is there enough perimeter defense, you think, for a championship run this year? I, I, I suspect the answer is yes, given that you have two of the best anchors in the NBA. But I just want to know, like, it's it's going to be pretty matchup based. And I think there's probably going to be a lot of, a lot of guys that can be targeted. Yeah, definitely. So I, I think uh, I think there's probably an audition period from now until early February for the various perimeter players on this team to prove to John Horace and Adrian Griffin that there is. And I think if there's not, and maybe either way, because it feels like Horace usually finds some sort of perimeter defender at the deadline, even if it doesn't seem like a huge weakness. Um, I would imagine that we see more players, at least one more player like that added. Um, I think right now, certainly it looks short. Um, Dame says he'll be able to focus more on that end while doing less defensively. Still not going to, you know, pencil in an all defensive campaign for Dame, nor did he say that to be clear. Um, yeah. But, you know, that that is what it is. Chris used to be a great three and D player, but certainly, you know, with the age and the injuries and the more offensive load, he's taken on a less of a role there. Although, again, if he's doing less offensively and he's feeling good, it looks like he's actually dropped some weight as well, which, again, so did everyone else look, lost or gained 20 vital pounds. But um, he, he's looking good, so we'll see if he can be a little better than he was last season. But then it comes to, like, can a player like Marjan stick in the rotation? You know, can Pat Connaughton, who's like a good positional defender, be good enough of a positional defender with – the back line of Giannis and Brooke, which, you know, you have two top two defensive player of the year guys over the last five or so years. That's a pretty good place to start, uh, but certainly they are going to need some help. And, you know, the bench mob right now of like Cameron Payne, Malik Beasley, you're not seeing elite defenders there. Jay Crowder being able to have a more complete season. He looked good in the regular season, bad in the playoffs. That would make a huge deal as well. I think Crowder will factor in there. Um, I feel like they're probably a defender light, but, if one of the rookies, one of the young guys, Crowder, can really stick and be a big part of the rotation, maybe it looks a lot better you know, when the games are actually happening than it does right now. I think it's completely fair, and I think that that's one of the good things about the regular season, especially in today's NBA. It's not necessarily about winning 65 games anymore. It's about ramping up and making sure that you are your best self at the end of the road as opposed to at the beginning of the road. I, I think a couple of teams have learned their lessons from that in recent years, like the Phoenix Suns and Boston Celtics. So there, there are some reasons to believe in the Bucks kind of slowly ramping up Chris, slowly ramping up who they need to on the defensive end, and then figuring out by the deadline. So I am going to predict this team to win 55 games. I'm not going to predict them to win that much more. I know they won 58 last year. I think that there is not like a, an actual regression coming in the regular season. It's just about what they're focusing on. It's about, hey, Dame is probably not going to play 70 games. He's probably going to play a lesser amount. And and maybe Giannis even plays a lesser amount. He's been secretly a little bit injured uh, over the course of these past few years too. So I have them winning 55. Is that fair? Is that too low? That's second in the East. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they ended up close to that 58 number again, honestly, just because looking back, I mean, they were really dealt with a lot of injuries last season. As you mentioned, Giannis missed, right. I think, 19 games, or either Giannis or Drew did, and the other one missed about 15. And then, of course, Chris you know, looked like a shell of himself for a handful that he did play and missed more than half the season. And they still 
cranked out 58. And you lose some depth pieces, you know, Javon Carter, uh, Wesley Matthews, Joe Ingles, guys like that. But, you know, you add in a Jay Crowder who didn't play very much. Malik Beasley is, is a new addition. Cameron Payne. I, I don't think their world's more shallow. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I know they, they outwon their net rating last season. They honestly right. had kind of a weird regular season for how many games they won. Um, I think 55 is fair. It wouldn't surprise me if they were the one seed again. I mean, this is a team that has really just won at a high level, no matter who's been available. Um, I know they dropped to, I think, like third or so in the East. The year Brooke missed a lot of games when the defense faltered. But again, they just they find ways to win. They really do. And I sure. don't think the new coaching staff is going to go away from that uh, very often. So I'm thinking high 50s. I think there's a shot they win 60. I mean, even if they're oh, yeah. cautious and guys sit, I mean, with there's just a shot that Giannis and Dame run over teams, right? Like, I think that yeah. that's on the table for them. Uh, we'll see what happens. I don't think they're going to chase that by any means. Uh, but I don't think they were really chasing 58 either. And it just kind of happened. So uh, especially look at the East. I mean, Boston looks great. Uh, they're, they're certainly ramping up. I think the Cavs got a lot better. Otherwise, though, I think most of the teams, we'll see what Philly is like, um, but I think most of the teams are a clear level below the Bucks level or, or more than oh, that. Yeah. So I think oh, yeah. it, they can kind of accidentally pile up some wins that way. Yeah, just for posterity's sake, I have Cle or Boston at 56 and Milwaukee at 55. So it's not like, like th there are going to be some wins that kind of shift over to the West, I think, but in general, it is going to be a bloodbath at the top between those two top teams, uh, Boston and Milwaukee. So I'm very curious to see how that pans out. If you had to predict it right now, does this team win a finals? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Honestly. I mean, uh, when you can roll in with Giannis and Dame together, I think, you know, as we talked about earlier, I, I, and I, uh, by the way, agree with just giving it to the champion. Like, I'm not going to argue you on Jokic Murray. Like, we just saw those guys do it in very dominant fashion. That means a lot to me. Someone's got to unseat the Nuggets. So, but not to argue who's one, who's two, or get into the weeds. Let's just put it this way. You feel as good as any team's top two if you come in with Damian Lillard and Giannis. And I think the supporting cast around them is really strong. You know, I don't think they have the, maybe the top six of Boston, but I think they're deep enough overall to complement that top two. And I just think that that pairing is just going to be so devastating. So assuming they figure out the defense or add another good defender at the deadline, I really like their chances this year uh, to, you know, get a second one in three years here for the Bucks. Ty, I have a feeling we're going to be talking a lot this year. We're going to be talking a lot, chatting a lot about the progress from the Bucks and, and what it looks like, maybe uh, detailing some of those matchups, maybe even detailing a finals matchup. That seems like that seems like a, a possibility between the Bucks and, and maybe maybe the Nuggets. So should be a lot of fun. Uh, Ty, thank you so much for hopping on. He is Ty Windish, host of the Eurostep podcast. Make sure to go follow his work. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time, man. Thank you for having me, Ryan. It was a blast. Certainly looking forward to uh, talking again soon about some great teams here.